Hello class, welcome back today. Good to see everyone again. So today we're going to have more fun learning about DNA. Um, yesterday we went over some of the basics of the amazing things that DNA can do such as providing all the traits and characteristics of every life form on the planet. So for example, DNA creates the traits of a blue jay that make its feathers blue or that make a gecko green, um, that make a blue whale so large, the largest mammal on the planet, and so on and so forth. All of these differences and the variety of all the biodiversity we see on the planet is due to this amazing molecule, DNA. Now today, we're going to expand our knowledge further and look at the role that DNA plays in reproduction. So anytime an organism needs to go uh, through the process of biological reproduction, it's necessary for cells to be able to split into two and reproduce themselves. But what we don't want happening is we don't want all the DNA just going into one of those cells, leaving the other cell with no DNA in it. So what needs to happen? Well, all the DNA inside the cell first needs to make a copy of itself and then split apart. And then each copy will go with one of those new daughter cells once it undergoes cell division. And then each cell will have the instruction manual that it needs to build itself and to do all the important physiological functions that our cells do. So in order to look at this process, we're going to use our Gizmos app again. But first, let me shrink my screen down here so that I can get it out of the way. So I'm going to bring it down to the lower portion of my screen. And now here we are at the Gizmo app. And what you see over here on the right is a set of nucleosides. And these are the basic building blocks of DNA. And what you'll see here is that each one has a letter associated with it, A, C, G, and T. A stands for adenine, C for cytosine, G for guanine, and T for thymine. Now, you'll notice it also is connected to a five-pointed molecule here, which is a sugar molecule called deoxyribose. So we're going to build this DNA molecule nucleoside by nucleoside. So first we'll bring this over here into the cell nucleus. And the deoxyribose sugar is going to serve as the backbone of the molecule, but it needs to be connected by a phosphate linkage. So we'll drag a phosphate over here. Then we can connect the next nucleoside. Okay, and once it has a phosphate, the nu we now call the nucleoside a nucleotide. So we add a T instead of an S, nucleotide. Okay, now we want to add another nucleoside. And so first we have to add a phosphate linkage. Now I'm just going to randomly select one of these nucleosides and come and attach it over here. And just keep building one strand because DNA is actually double-stranded. So this first strand we're building is going to be called the leading strand. Okay, and then we're going to build a complementary strand to that, and that will be the lagging strand. Okay. And once we build this leading strand, we're going to need to select the appropriate nucleosides to match with each of these nucleosides here. Actually, they're nucleotides now because they're linked with the phosphate groups. Okay, and the last one we're adding here is a G for guanine, 
and this phosphate we'll put at the beginning of the molecule here. Okay, now we have a new set of nucleosides here. And the trick here to remember to know which nucleoside will be the complementary pair to which nucleoside over here is we'll start with A, and A always has to be paired with a T. So we'll come and grab, grab, uh, grab and drag a T over here. And then we'll need to link that with a phosphate group. And then the other thing is that a C is always paired with a G. So we'll drag a G over here. And we can say the same goes in reverse, just like an A has to be paired with a T, a T also has to be paired with an A. Okay. All right, class. Again, what needs to be paired with a C here? Does anybody remember? Yes, exactly. We need a G. Okay. And the same is true for a G. Just like a C needs to be paired with a G, a G needs to be paired with a C. So we will drag a C over here. Okay, what do we need next? Which nucleoside? Exactly, we need a T to go with the A. And what will we need to go with the T? Yes, very good. We're going to need an A to go with this T. And then finally, we only have one option left, and a C is always paired with a G. Then we'll attach this last phosphate. Okay, now in order to replicate the DNA, we first need to split it apart. And we need for that an enzyme that will come and separate all of these base pairs from one another. So here you can see DNA helicase is the enzyme. We're gonna click on release enzyme. And that chews up the base pairs, okay? Then we're gonna need the enzyme DNA polymerase to start the replication process. So we're gonna release that enzyme. And that gives us a whole set of nucleotides over here, okay? So we're going to need something that will pair with an A, and of course that's going to be a T. So the polymerase is going to be adding on the T inside of the nucleus, and then it adds a G, every time we have a C. In class, what do we need to match with the T? Exactly, we need an A. And with a C, what do we need? Yep. And next, yes, a C. And you guessed it, a T. And with a T, we always pair it with an A. And then our last choice here, here is a C, okay? So now we have the leading strand and the lagging strand put together. And now over here we have a lagging strand and we need to build the leading strand for it. So with the T we always have an A. And G and C go together. A and T. G and C. C and G. What do we need next? Yes, exactly, the A goes with T, and yep, that's right, T goes with A, and then finally G goes with C. All right, so now what we've done is we've started out with an original double-stranded DNA molecule, and now we have replicated that DNA to make two exact identical copies of the original double-stranded DNA we have two double-stranded copies. So you can see here that these are the same. We start with an A and a T here, and over here we also have an A and a T. And then we have CG and TA, and over here CG and TA, all the way down ending with GC and over here GC. 
So these are two exact copies. And then when the cell undergoes cell division, it can take each of these copies along with the new daughter cell so that each new daughter cell will have its own set of genetic instructions for building itself and performing all of the physiological functions that are necessary. Okay, so now it's your turn. Class, I'm going to have you pair up into uh, partners and we'll have you open up the Gizmos app on your screen and you'll get a turn to do this yourself. And I'll want one of you to build the original double-stranded DNA molecule. And then your partner can take a turn after that and use the two enzymes to split the molecule down the middle and then build the complementary strands to complete the new two copies. And of course, the two of you can work together to help each other out. And then I'll walk around to each pair and be there in case you have any questions and to offer guidance. Okay, good luck and let's get started.